Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel podcast and video podcast series, where we talk with our guests about experimental, light sport, and ultralight aviation. We are just getting started with this, so if the audio isn't 100% just yet, bear with us. Perfection is coming. Let's jump right into the interview. Okay, everyone. Right. So uh, I want to do something obviously a little bit different since we are kind of on lockdown in certain states and we either shouldn't be traveling or can't be traveling. And also this year, unfortunately, if you haven't heard already, Sun Fun has been officially canceled. So that's one less venue, one less aviation event that we can go to and hang out with all of our aviation friends here. So I want to reach out to uh, several different people in the aviation world and make a connection and share that with you so you know what's going on um, in their their end of the, the spectrum here. So today we're here with Sebastian Hines of Zenith Aircraft and want to just discuss a few things with him to see how things are going on in his world. So welcome Sebastian. Yeah, thanks Brian. I'm certainly happy to be here and uh, certainly happy to share with uh, all of you shut-ins and you know around the country, around the world, um, you know about what what Zenith Aircraft, what we're doing uh, during this time. Excellent. I appreciate your time being available. So I know it's on everybody's mind right now about, you know, how things, how this virus is going to affect not only the economy, but, you know, for us in aviation. Um, and let's talk about that in, in just a minute, because that's going to be, you know, a hot topic for us. But first, um, let's just talk about Zenith for a minute and what's new for 2020. Uh, you know, what, what changes have happened, what's new, or uh, just what's, what's going on for 2020? Well, you know, we, we've had a few, uh, few good years. Uh, you know, the economy prior to this uh, pandemic, the economy was doing really quite well. And so we've been, been very optimistic about, uh, about the current uh, way things are going. And, uh, and, and going into 2020, we're quite excited and optimistic about the year. Of course, now, you know, everybody's guess is up, you know, it's all up in the air right now in terms of how it will affect long term the economy and so forth but uh everything i've seen we continue to stay optimistic about uh about things uh Xena specifically in terms of new models new designs um, we were looking at 2020 as being more of a year of continually uh, improving what we do and how we do it rather than coming up with a brand new design and kind of disrupting, you know, people's planning, if you will. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but more continuing to perfect what we're doing. Uh, we're, do we continue to do a lot of work behind the scenes in terms of making our kits easier and uh, quicker to build. And that's really been the focus of uh, a lot of what we, we've been doing, as well as uh, increasing our outreach uh, to customers and, and builders and flyers. Uh, of course, uh, right now that's difficult to do or, or definitely refocusing it, how we do it, uh, doing it online and virtually, so to speak. But uh, that's, you know, in, in a nutshell, though, that's really what, we, what we've been working on for 2020. Okay, okay. And just uh, as a review, you think by now the world knows that Zenith exists, but maybe there's some new people. We actually hope there's new people in this community, right, that have never heard of aviation and, and just getting started with this. So just really quickly run through the different line and models that you do offer currently. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, you know, I love talking about Zenith. Obviously, I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, Zenith <laughs> Aircraft Company, you know, we were formed in 1992, uh, going on, what, 28 years ago, I guess now. And it's kind of creepy looking out in my factory because right now we're the production is kind of at a standstill on the production side because of the coronavirus stuff. And in the last 28 years, this is the first time where I can look out uh, and see that, you know, the factory is kind of at a standstill. When I look in the shipping department and the offices, we continue to stay busy there, but the actual production is kind of at a standstill. But anyway, right. um, you know, we've been manufacturing for 28 years uh, aircraft kits. And I know by the, the LSA registration standard, we are the number one uh, light sport aircraft uh, builder in this or light sport aircraft brand. I think it goes uh, by uh, in the entire country. So that, you know, we're pretty proud of that. And uh, you know, we were, we're a big uh, kit aircraft manufacturer. We, we ship out about one kit a working day typically. So that's uh, again, that's a lot of airplanes that, that we typically produce uh, 
from here. And again, we are a kit manufacturer. Zenith Aircraft is not an aircraft manufacturer. We manufacture the parts and the pieces for the do-it-yourself market to actually put these airplanes together. And I think, Brian, you're, you're one of our customers, aren't you? You're building a, a, one of, a Zenith. Yeah, I was the, one of the early adopters for your cruiser. I think one of the first right. people to get a set of plans because I really like to get in there, work with my hands and work with metal. So yeah, it's, I think it was what, 2014, I think the plans. Right. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, again, you know, we we're we're very thankful for the for the thousands of builders, you know, like yourself around the country that are actively building their their Zenith airplanes. And uh, my dad, Chris Hines, founded, uh, you know, or, or is a designer and 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 really the the brains behind the operation has designed all of our aircraft, um, starting with the the low wing uh, CH two hundred aircraft, which later evolved into the CH six hundred one. Now the CH uh, 650 series low-wing airplanes as well as then the ch7 uh, series airplanes a 701 which came out in uh, uh, 1986 uh, it's a high wing short takeoff and landing design the very unique features about it fixed leading edge slats um, and, and you know a lot of a lot of features to, to make it excel at short takeoff and landing performance yet still being easy to build and easy to fly tricycle gear configuration and you know some unique characteristics like that and the 701 has evolved into the CH750 series um, which is a little bit larger the cruiser is 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 the non stole version of that then we also have our new CH750 Super Duty, which is a, a heavier non-LSA model with a larger engine, and we've added a rear jump seat in the aircraft. And so currently we produce basically four different models that, uh, well, five if you uh, incorporate the low wing, of course, uh, to it, but uh, four different models of the high wing and then uh, our low wing series as well. So kind of a good range of aircraft for the typical recreational pilot, meaning, you know, not high high time uh, a pilot, somebody that just likes to fly rep primarily for recreation purposes, not fast or not too fast for, for high speed transportation, but more, uh, again, the type of airplane that you would fly on the weekends and the occasional cross country trip. And uh, that's really our market that we focus on. And on the builder side, again, the first time builder, um, we've managed to really grow and increase our market by, by making our kits easier to build and uh, quicker and, and requiring fewer skills and, uh, again, less time. So it, it's just something that the typical person can go out and learn and, and build their own airplane. Sure. And that's one of the things that uh, attracted me, you know, five, six years ago now is that right. you guys do offer so many different options depending on either your skill level, time level, uh, commitment, right. and, and so mm -hmm. forth. So like, you know, back then, um, I want to just dive into the, the um, scratch building because I, I like working with metal, and you offer plans. Right. And moving through that, uh, you know, we moved four times in five years, and it's like, all right, well, I want to turn up the dial on getting this project going. So, you know what, I'm going to skip this next component and just buy the kit directly from you. So a good mix and match options going through the build is available. And that's, that's something that was very appealing to me as well. And talking yeah, about I, the, go ahead. No, and, and that's really a good point you, 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 you touch on. And I think you're, you're quite typical, um, you know, again, your needs and your, because your situations changes over time, you know, at the beginning, you might've had more time than money. And then as you go through, uh, you know, five, five years later or, or, or whatever it may be, your, your, your needs may change and you may have a bit more money than time. And that's where, again, having the availability then of a kit or quick build kit versus scratch building. And again, that's what, you know, that's what we're about uh, in terms of the product. Uh, we really don't, we're not out there to sell you one thing. It's, uh, we'll work with you to try to to get you, you know, whatever you need, whether it's building from plans and supporting you as a scratch builder or anywhere in between up to a quick build. And again, I, and we realize over time your needs change. Just like, again, the, the right now with, with this coronavirus situation going on, we have builders that, you know, um, have time on their hands. And that's why we want to be there to be able to support them through this, is that if they have time and they want to work on stuff, we want to be able to get them parts and or else, uh, you know, pivots or anything else to be able to continue to build whatever the situation may be. Sure. And going back to the, the kit and how it's manufactured for a moment, um, from I understand you, you guys are now using this match hold technology. Uh, if you could explain just a, in short what that is and which models have or do not have that or what plans for the future of expanding to all of your models for that. Right. And that's a good 
good question. Um, you know, match hole technology uh, continues to evolve and get better. Um, it's not just matched hole anymore. It's final hole size match hole, which is a, a, if you're a builder, you know, and will appreciate that because when you do pilot match, match holes, it's definitely a nice thing because you can just click everything together. But when it's pilot hole size, you have to still redrill it and then take it apart deeper and then put it back together again. When it's sure. final, when it's final hole size match drilled, you can click it together and pretty much rivet it. So you're really, uh, it's a, it's really a, a, a leap forward in, in build times and in, uh, in how easy these uh, assemblies are to put together. And we use, uh, you know, CNC uh, uh, high-speed routers uh, to manufacture those parts. Uh, basically, we design and, and develop everything in a 3D model. And uh, then we flatten the parts out, send it to the CNC machine, which not only cuts out the parts, but then completely pre-drills the parts. And then, so, and then we form the parts, have the drill, the skins pre-drilled, pre-cut, and so forth. And then the, the nice thing is you take those parts, you, you, you line them up, clicko them together, and, and rivet them. And uh, I'll try to make sure to include some uh, some video footage to share with you about how we do that. But it really is that simple. And the nice thing is, uh, on, on a number of levels, uh, number one, the, the the skills that are required to do that, of course, it's just it's just easier. But more importantly, the time has gone down dramatically. And uh, it's really nice for a project like that because it it there's a lot of built-in motivation because you cannot spend two hours with this type of, of construction and, and not have something to show for it because right. you will, you will have something to show for it. And sometimes I know when you're, when you're working on, uh, you know, the older style kits, you know, you can easily spend a day or two. And even though you are making progress visually, it's not quite as apparent. So, you know, when your wife is looking in the shop two days later, she kind of sees the same thing and versus <laughs> with what are you doing stuff. in there? Are you, are you exactly. Just, are you just uh, trying to stay away from me? Or are you actually getting something done in that shop? Huh? Exactly. So sometimes it's, again, there's just that built in motivation. It's easier to take a picture at the end of the day because you, that picture will show something differently. So again, well, that's I'm going to promote, take video, say it with video. Okay. Well, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And uh, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, and that's the, the nice thing about, about, you know, high speed internet and everybody with a smartphone and so forth is, you know, the videos have become the, the JPEGs of, you know, 10 years ago. It's sure. so easy and, and to, to, to share video, to take video and to, and to share that. Um, so, so going on your original uh, point, uh, you know, so we do the final hole size match drilled. Uh, our newest models always feature our, our newest technology because when we come up with a new model, we really develop it around the technology. And, um, you know, as a kit manufacturer, again, we, we're, we're one of the few companies that really designs and supports all of our designs as scratch for scratch builders for plans only. But at the same time, as a, as a manufacturer, we also design based on our manufacturing technology, which is why now that we do have uh, these great uh, high speed CNC routers available, we design for that. So, so that again, we can develop a kit to really optimize that technology. So again, our newer, our newer models, uh, the, uh, the uh, CH750 Super Duty is the model with the most final hole sized uh, drilling. Uh, pretty much though, the, all the CH750 series, uh, the Stoll, the Cruiser, as well as the new Super Duty have basically the same fuselage sections and so forth. So very quickly we are bringing that uh, uh, final hole size match drill to the other CH750 models, as well as we are working currently on the CH650, the low wing to, to increase the number of match hold, uh, final hole size match hold parts. And then, uh, and then the 701, our earlier model, which continues to be very successful but uh, and that slowly we continue also to uh, update the kits on that okay so at the moment though the 701 remains more of like a traditional style I think you've got the the skins that are pre-drilled right but, but not what's behind it and then the 650 um, is and that one's primarily match drilled but it's mostly a, a pilot hole size so 
Okay. Some, somewhere in between. And, it, and, it's, and it's funny how, you know, when, when I look back on the last 10, 15 years, how, you know, 15 years ago, I considered our kits, whether it was the 650 or the 701 kits to be really quite advanced by today's standards. So, however, they're, they're a little bit more retro in the sense that, you know, like say they're more traditional or requires a little bit more, uh, more time. Now, the, still the advantage for the builder today, though, is that uh, the older kits uh, like the 701 and the 650 currently, um, you still, um, you know, the, the, the lower prices still benefits you though, because uh, we're not spending as much CNC time on these parts. So we can, we can still sell those parts at a lower price. So you're benefiting, you know, it, it, it might take a little bit longer, but it's still easy stuff to do. Cost, and, cost and, time benefit, right? It, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, when the economy is really strong, obviously people, have more more uh, money than time when the economy slows down um, it's the other way around so there's basically something for everybody I think in that mix excellent excellent well real quick I, I do get this question quite frequently so I want to go ahead and ask you this people are inquiring about you acquired Sam aircraft a couple years ago and haven't seen much is yep. that something in the future it's gonna happen or is it just a what's going on with that well and that's a good question and 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 I hate to admit it sometimes we we ask ourselves that question <laughs> so, sometimes as well but you know the, but the 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 very premise of why we acquired Sam aircraft hasn't changed at all today uh, hasn't changed at all. Um, you know, we bought that aircraft for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was entirely designed within SolidWorks. And so, which is, which is what we're doing now. And, 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 you know, those of you that work with SolidWorks all the time appreciate why that's important. But then those of you on the outside, maybe not quite as much, but again, the, the, the by designing in SolidWorks, it really gives you the ability to go from, from the model, from the computer model to manufacturing. It really, uh, it, you know, in one step, it takes out the two or three prototype steps that we would typically do uh, previous to that. So it's an it's an aircraft that even though you you're not seeing very much progress, in, you know, in, in terms of what's happening with it, but we have we're, we're we continue to do work on the solid model and can do that. And uh, you know, when we bought the original uh, 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 design and, and, and prototype, it was it was an LSA aircraft tricycle gear with the Rotax engine. And quite frankly, it was a little bit overweight to be a good LSA. Um, you know, like a lot, I hate to say it, but a lot of LSAs are a little bit overweight. Um, as the LSA rule continues to evolve and change, there's a lot of talk about increasing the weight and so forth. Um, it may be an LSA again and, 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 a, and a lightweight LSA by, by the new definition. But we, we switched it over to the Lycoming 0360 engine away from the Rotax engine. Not that we don't love the Rotax, but also the, the, the Lycoming, we just, we just thought was a better suited for the size and weight of that airplane, uh, just a, a better uh, uh, suited engine for that. Well, and also the, the style of aircraft, right? That's kind of like a, a fighter looking plane. So you want something that has a certain sound to it as well, right? And absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you get, like you say, the style of aircraft, it just begs to be a sport aerobatic uh, category uh, type airplane. And that's a thing with the, with the light sport category. It was very lightweight. A lot of emphasis was trying to keep it light, even though it, it was relatively heavy for, for the category. It was still, uh, you know, a lot of emphasis was on keeping it light, which, which also limited some of the spar structures for aerobatic capability. And we said, let's put it, you know, let's forget about light sport for now and make it where we can uh where we can do uh, a loop and a roll with that airplane uh, for the sport pilot or not in sport pilot category but for the for the recreational pilot that wants to loop and roll an airplane and then we did something also a little bit odd a little bit uh uncharacteristic of zenith is we actually took a tricycle gear airplane and shifted it over to a tail dragger and again back to the the style of airplane that it is i think that it's a kind of a retro style uh i like to call it a modern retro design in the sense it has a lot of the the, the retro look and and feel for it yet uh, we can develop it into a modern kit modern engine modern avionics and uh, a modern a modern uh, uh kit to assemble so will that be rolling out anytime soon or is that still kind of in market um, research stage um, I think we've we've 
kind of completed our market research standpoint, which which has shown us that there's definitely a market for it. Um, you know, we're we're a kit manufacturer that you know again we we know the business well and we've been in it for for long enough and and we're mature enough that we don't need to come out with a prototype and take deposits to fund our production or anything like that. So we've never accepted any deposits on it, which which is a puts us in a good position in the sense that we there's no pressure to rush it to market. Okay. And um, and for us, we've been really quite busy the last several years, and so a new project like that always takes takes the back seat to our our existing project. Un understandable, existing you guys are on fire with with what you have already. So to be able to stop, and you're you're not a small company, but as companies go, you are a small business. So. Right, absolutely, and that's the thing. We are like like you say, we are a small business. Uh, we don't have a lot of different departments that we can allocate these new projects to. So if we're if we're working on the same project, that means we're not working on this project or that project. And so it is a question of, of priority. The nice thing about having kind of a retro design is it doesn't really go out of style. So it yeah. uh, which which is why when we introduce it, whether it's two years from now or five years from now. It's it's still gonna I think always have a market for the for what we introduce. Okay, well thanks for the update on that because I've got several inquiries about that because they they think it's sure. a beautiful design and it has that military ish look to it and that kind of stuff, right? It's very classic. Right. So, um, and and kind of in closing here, being that we are in this uncertain times and it seems like it changes if not weekly but daily on how long we're going to be on lockdown that kind of stuff. So there's, there's no way of, of even trying to predict what the future is, but what are you guys doing or what is the short term, long term, if we do remain kind of a lockdown? Um, obviously, you, you said the production is kind of shut down, but you still got a stockpile of yeah. parts you can ship out and you're not like mm -hmm. a skeleton crew. But moving forward, uh, what can people do to stay in the game, even if they're a little bit concerned about the economy and maybe not wanting to do a total investment? Can they buy components? Can they, I mean, what? How can they break yeah. it down to stay involved and engaged? Um, yeah, uh, you know we're we're committed to to helping our customers, whether they're existing customers uh, as well as as new people, to get involved. Um, again, you know, home building your airplane, you know, basically building an airplane at home in the garage, in the basement, or even at the at the airport at your hangar, it's a great uh, social distancing or isolation uh, project. So I encourage uh, builders to stay stay involved, uh, which is why if you if you currently have a kit or a set of drawings, you know work work on it and and we are here to answer the phone we are here to ship parts we have a you know because we're a kit manufacturer we always have a lot of stuff in stock our shelves are always full of parts so even though again it, our, our actual kit shipments may slow down a little bit right now but if you need a part or a sub assembly you need a wing kit something like that we we will work hard to get it to you um, of course, we're depending on dependent on the shipping companies to you know to get it from from our door at Zenith to, to your door. But uh, right now, as best I can tell, uh, the the whole shipping infrastructure uh, in this country is still proceeding fairly well. So I encourage you to 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 keep on building. Um, you know, one thing we did, uh, you know, we had a, a workshop scheduled for uh, the 23rd and 24th of April of uh you know later this month and obviously because of everything's going on with the travel restrictions and so forth and all the, the social distancing we've had to cancel the workshop but rather than you know just put a canceled date what we've what we've done is we've turned it into an online virtual workshop um so you know rather than having our customers or, or, or participants come to the Zenith factory and build the rudder kit here, which is just, you know, like a starter kit is we're shipping it to customers uh, around the country and then uh, using zoom or we're, we're not exactly sure what platform we're going to use, whether it's zoom or, or, uh, a YouTube live or, or some platform like that. We're going to be basically all together. We're going to be building the workshop kind of same as we do in the shop, but we're going to be doing it spread out around the country. And we already have folks signed up from pretty much all, all four corners of the country already. So it's kind of, it'll be a neat thing. I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, even though it's, again, it's a kind of a letdown that we're, that we're not able to do it here, like originally scheduled uh, rather than get that, you know, where we just cancel it. We're just in, instead uh, just going to re, reformat and and continue to build that way and uh, so that uh, again uh, 
folks that want to stay active, uh, if you're looking for something to do, I encourage you to, to again, look at, look at kits. Uh, is a good time to get started. And, and for us as, as Zenith, we want to encourage uh, and, and take full advantage of being able to support you guys while we still can. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I had started on Facebook, uh, my own group, Experimental Aircraft Channel group, and the whole Say It With video is to keep mm -hmm. people connected during their shop building because sometimes it, it can get a little bit lonely. It's like one of those things where you have to hyper focus, concentrate because it's a very, very detailed project of reading the plans, making sure you have mm -hmm. the right part and you're doing the right steps. So that can be kind of isolating in itself. But at the same time, it's, it's nice and encouraging to have other people uh, doing the same thing you're doing and sharing that. So that's why I created the group. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited also to see your, your live uh, rudder workshop to kind of, you know, see that, that video version as well. And um, like you said, what, what you've got for options right now is a great time. You know, even if, you know, we're concerned about the economy and you know, maybe you've been sitting on the idea of ordering a set of plans. Well, you sell plans. You know, that's that's the, the the starter starter level, right? You can order a set of plans. That's not a huge investment. Next step after that was is to order a rudder kit and yep. try your hand at metalworking. If you like that, then progress on to a fuselage or a wing or just you can start very incre incrementally at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. And and we want to try to make it easy. And again, we've always done that, but again, in, in this time is maybe makes even more sense to do it exactly that way. Okay. All right. To, to kind of close down here, because I'll try to keep this fairly short for YouTube, but um, what are the several different ways? I know you've got your different websites. You have your website and you have a arrow, I think, for a builder's group. And then what, what are all the different, uh, where are you online? Well, the easiest way is just start zenithair.com, uh, Z-E-N-I-T-H-A-I-R. And from there, you can pretty much steer in all the different directions. But uh, yeah, we have zenith.arrow, which is a, a a portal, if you will, for active Zenith builders and owners, primarily to share pictures, uh, discussion groups, and so forth about that. Uh, we also, we, we have a pretty uh, active Facebook page. We try to post something pretty much every day about what's going on at, at the Zenith factory, sharing a lot of the successes from our customers as well, new completions and, and so forth, uh, sharing events. Um, um, again, uh, we have our online uh, uh, workshop scheduled for April 23rd and so if you you okay. go on you can basically order the rudder kit we'll have it to you probably within the next five to ten days which gives you plenty of time still to be ready for that workshop and so if you if you're looking for something to do and uh, and again we'll send you plenty of reading material ahead of time to get ready for the workshop and, and then uh, again kind of I see like in the backdrop of your picture right now you've got a nice work table in the background there Brian it's kind of the same setup like that you know uh, all that's pretty much all you need is a, is a workbench table area and uh, build the rudder and do it together with a, a number of other people and again I think it's just a very positive and, and, and good way to stay active and to uh, get started on a project that hopefully will turn into a full flying airplane uh, that is the end game yeah, yeah that's it that's it well i appreciate uh, all you've done um over the years your whole entire family in aviation and being so supportive in many levels um i mean obviously you're in business but you're in this because you're passionate about it it's not just Absolutely. about a paycheck right so uh, i appreciate everything you've done for that thank you for taking a few minutes out of your your day today to talk about what's going on personally with zenith and uh we'll, we'll share this to the world all right, Brian, and thank you for all you do. Uh, you're a great promoter of uh, aviation and, and, again, the the love we have of building and flying airplanes. So we're, we do appreciate all the work you do as well. So thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you for joining us here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel for the video podcast and or podcast. These episodes will be available on YouTube as well as all the popular podcast platforms. Thanks for watching or listening. We'll catch you next time.